Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I hope this class is going to be interesting for you. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions about, about Facebook ads. I know a lot of small business owners don't know how to use the platform properly. And uh, today's class is mostly to understand the platform and what's behind the, um, to building a strategy to create Facebook ads, okay? So we're going to talk about uh, different concepts and, and different strategies for you to uh, start budgeting correctly your paid advertisement on Facebook, okay? If you have any questions, please use the chat. You can use the Q&A, you can raise your hand and um, Juan is gonna help me with the, with the comments because sometimes I'm not able to catch them. <laughs> but feel free to um, pose your questions. Um, I know this is going to be a kind of difficult uh, topic, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible and as basic as possible for you, okay? Oy. Okay, Facebook ads. Facebook ads, um, allow business owners to sponsor their preferred content. That means that you can choose uh, what content you want to uh, pay for to other people to view. Um, these are the main uh, topics that we're gonna discuss today. We're gonna talk about target, target a specific audiences and how important it is for you paid advertisement to be effective we're going to talk about how to pay to promote your best content and only the best content, please. We're going to talk about social media advertising budget, how to structure a budget for your small business, how to start and then increase your budget while you are getting better in using the platform. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk about insights analysis and how important it is to measure uh, the performance of your, of your paid ad campaigns. Not only your paid ad campaigns, but also your post, whatever you um, post on your social media channels, you have to um, monitor, okay? So we're going to talk about that too. So those are going to be the four topics that we're going to discuss today. Um, Let's start with the basic thing, where I can find the ad sender. <laughs> I know this is, sounds um, like really basic, but believe me, some people do not know where to find this tool. So remember that the, paid uh, the Facebook ads is only going to be available on your fan page your profile, uh, your personal profile page does not have um, this tool, okay? So in order to create Facebook ads, you're gonna need to open a fan page or a Facebook business page, okay? So I'm going to um, think that you already have that, you, you already have a fan page, so, um, if you don't know how to open a fan page, let me know. I can provide you the slides of the last class when I talk about Facebook, okay? Uh, so the ad center is going to be located on, the, uh, on your left when you are seeing your Facebook uh, business page, you're going to find a, a menu bar on the uh, left, uh, side. So uh, you're going to choose Ad Center. It's just right there under Publishing Tools. It's in between Publishing Tools and Page Quality. Okay, so you're going to click right there. And then you're going to see this. Okay. And it's going to give you a summary of what you wanted to do with your campaign. If you want to reach people, you want to post engage, you know, and it's going to give you the um, option of creating an ad in the, um, in the right side. But on the left, you're able to see that Ad Center has two tools, two, two, um, two sub menus, okay? It has all ads and it has audiences. 
if you click on all ads, you're going to be able to go to your ads manager, which he is a different tool. It's going to open a totally new page where you're going to be able all your paid ad campaigns display. Okay, this is in case that you have like more than one. So let's say that you have um, three or four different campaigns running. So in your ads manager, you're gonna be able to see that performance. Um, and that's, this, is, this is in this case, in the case that you want to see all ads, okay? So click on all ads and then click on ads manager and you're going to go through this um, tool. Um, I don't have anything in my page, but I put you an example of how it will look if you have different campaigns running. Okay, so let's say that you have one, two, three, four campaigns running at the same time. You're able to go to your ads manager and see the performance. Okay. Now we found the ad center. That's very important. You know where it's at, where it's located now. So we're going to talk about the first topic today, target a specific audiences. Okay, the first thing that we need to do before we create a paid ad campaign, and this is very important to understand, is the mindset of a Facebook user. And I always talk about this in different classes, uh, because I think that is uh, very important to address. A person who is using his profile to go to Facebook, they don't go to buy anything, right? It's like, I don't, I'm not going to go to Facebook just to buy or purchase something there. If I want a specific product and I need to find something that I want to really buy, I'm going to go to Google probably, and I'm going to find it there. So the, mass, the, mindset of, the mindset of a Facebook user is to go and interact, okay? Is to see their family profiles, their news feed, and see what others are posting there, like a photo or like a family reunion, or you want to share your upcoming trip or that you are on vacation. So the mindset of a Facebook user is to interact, is to build community, is to know what's going on with the world, okay? and what's, uh, what, what they are missing out. So they're not going to Facebook or any other social media channels with the idea to buy anything, okay? And why is this important for you as a small business to understand the mindset of a Facebook user? Because I see this a lot of times when a small business owner it's just posting like, buy me this, buy me that, buy me, buy me, buy my product, buy my service. And they're not really uh, posting something to interact with the customers. They're just trying to sell something. Okay, that's trying to wholesale something. And doesn't really work on social media channels. So we need to understand first, the mindset of a Facebook user. And that mindset is to interact, socialize, and to, you know, uh, get in touch with the world. So the second thing that you need to understand before create any paid ad campaign is who is your ideal client? And in this case, segmentation is key, and I'm going to show you how to do this, okay? So don't, don't be scared. A lot of, believe it or not, a lot of business owners don't take the time to understand who is their ideal client. And you have to know, you have to do your prior research to know, um, who is going to buy your product? Who is going to buy your service? Who has the money to pay for your product or your service? And this is a, this is a research that you have to do um, 
in, in, even when you are in the process of a startup, your business, um, you have to create your, your, um, your avatar, your ideal client. Then the third important thing is uh, to use the correct Facebook parameters because Facebook is going to give you a whole lot of interest, a whole lot of um, characteristics of these people that are going to be your potential customers. So to use the correct Facebook parameters, I, I think that you have to explore them all first or not, not all, but at least try to create different audiences that can work for you. Um, I'll show you in a minute. Um, remember that Facebook ads can, can provide you the location, the demographics, the interests and the behaviors of your customers. So if you have, if you do a proper research on who, you, who is your customer, then it's going to be a lot easier to find the profile, the right profile to target the right customer. Because I see that a lot of people use the platform of Facebook ads and they just put like the most broad um, characteristics, expecting that they're going to reach more people, but no, sometimes not because you reach a lot of people, it means that you are really targeting the right people. Okay, so sometimes you want to reach less people, but with the characteristics that you need, that you know can make a sale possible for you. Or that at least the people that you're getting in contact, they're going to make an inquiry. They're going to create an action. Maybe they're going to like the post. Maybe they're going to comment the post. And it's when you are able to interact. So that's why this is a very, very important step for you. Prior to spend your money, you will spend tons of money on Facebook ads or any other advertisement um, platform. It is very important that you have tailored your customer, okay? And Juan, just let me know if there's some questions because I'm not able to see the window. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna show you uh, how to create an audience, okay? Uh, let's go back to the ad center. I'm giving you again the, the, um, the way it looks like on your Facebook page. So you're gonna go to the, your um, ad center and then you're gonna go to audiences. And then it's going to give you a window like this, okay? And you can, you're going to name your audience. You can say audience number one, audience number two, you can name it uh, whatever you want. Uh, in this case, I name it target audience. And here you're going to um, choose um, what gender, maybe your product or service goes for men and women. So you're going to pick uh, all. In this case, I chose women. Okay, and then I choose my age, like age 30 to 65. And you have a different range of ages in, um, on Facebook, but like, again, think about who your ideal client is to properly age the target audience you need. And then locations. Locations is uh, very important because it, it helps you, it's going to help you to target uh, in very specific areas. Um, maybe you just put Las Vegas and you think that you are targeting correctly, but maybe, maybe your product is, um, is organic or your products are about health and, and they're, they're produced organically. So maybe you want to target Henderson because in Henderson, um, 
there's a lot of people who eat organically, okay? So maybe you don't need to target the whole Las Vegas thing, but you have to be more specific into targeting in Henderson. Or maybe you want to explore other areas like um, other areas that are close to you or that are close to your business. For example, you wanted to try Los Angeles or you want to try Boulder City. So you can try different locations. You can target as many as you want. Right now. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, we don't have any questions, but um, I I know that uh, some people might be thinking about. I don't want to miss out in targeting that another particular segment, but uh, this can be done with just another campaign, right? For example, if I have a, uh, I I do tax services, or uh, mm -hmm. I might just create a campaign for single people and another one for people with children, right? right. I mean, even though I might have I, my services applied to all those, um, a, more if, a more effective campaign would be just to target, you know, an image with a family to my potential clients with that are family mm -hmm. members. Yeah. And another one with, uh, with a picture of a cell phone on how you can do your you know, your taxes over the phone for the single and young people, right? It's not that I, I don't, I'm going to miss out on, on, on targeting that audience, right? It's just no. the campaign focus. Right. And that's why it's very important for you to create different audiences. That's why I'm, I'm going to explain, I'm explaining to you. You can create as many audiences as you need to. You can create audience number one, audience number two, audience number three, and then create the campaigns and the content, the right content for that specific um, audience, like you said. Um, for example, right now I'm creating my target audience and you're gonna see that this, um, this audience is going to be safe and then I can create another one and save it and then create another one and save it. And then when I am going to create my paid ad campaign that I'm paying for it, I'm able to choose from the audiences that I created. Uh, so I, it's a good point. And it is very important to do that. Okay, so in this portion, you're able to see that um, we, we chose some demographics. Just to give you an example, I chose um, the income, the household income, because I need people who makes a certain amount of money a year um, because that's... Uh, you know, that's the people who can pay my services. So I'm not targeting people who make less than a certain amount of money. I want to target, I don't maybe middle class, maybe upper class. So I'm able to do that too. I'm able to, it, it, the, the great thing about Facebook ads is I can make it as detailed as I want to. And, and that's good. And then I can go to, for example, demographics, relationship, relationship status. I can even, if, if I'm a wedding planner, I'm able to target engaged people. I'm able to target people who says in, our, in their profiles that are in a relationship. So I'm able to, to go as detailed as I want, okay? And for example, in the part of interest, I'm able to to target people who wants to, you know, who does work out, but I'm able also to um, not just put like physical fitness, but maybe I can put like uh, muscle fit fitness. So people who want to gain muscle. So I'm able to be very, very detailed on this. Okay. And then you're gonna see at the bottom in here how your audience gets defined as you are being more detailed, okay? In this case, because I, you know, uh, I did a good job in defining my audience and you can, um, you can see your potential audience size. In my case, I have 2,200,000 people, but you're able to be even more, um, because, you know, I'm targeting LA, and then that's why it's giving me so, you know, so many people there. But if I can be more specific into a certain area of LA, like for example, Santa Barbara or you know, uh, Malibu, 
then I can reduce the amount of audience. But it doesn't mean that, uh, and, and this is very important to let you know, a lot of people think that because the potential audience size is very reduced, they're not gonna get results. But that's not um, completely true. You might have uh, 500,000 people as a potential audience, but if, if it's your right audience, your paid ad is going to work. You know what I'm saying? So don't be scared about being too detailed um, into, into your audiences, into your tailoring your idea client. Um, like I said, in this case, I went very defined. Uh, just check here, you know, it's going to give you a red, green, and yellow. When you hit yellow, it's too broad. Okay, so you might not target correctly because you're not being specific enough. But if you are in the green area when it shows you that it's defined, you're gonna find people uh, who has those interests, okay? And sometimes you can go to the red side and be too specific. But like I said, if your industry is a niche, you might want to be specific, okay? And that's fine. So once you finish to, um, to create your ideal audience, then you're going to save that audience. And it's going to show right here, okay? So I create this... Um, target audience with a potential audience size of 2 million and 200 and was created on April 16, 2021. I'm able to edit that audience if I need to. And then I'm able to create another one on the right side. So I can, I can create as many as I need to. And like I said, it is very important. This part before spending that much money Please do, do this research before, because um, I, I, I wouldn't like that you lose a lot of money um, creating ads that are not gonna be effective for you because you're not targeting the right audience that you need. So prior to create your beta campaigns, please target audience, okay? So I'm giving you this checklist uh, you're going to get these slides, so don't worry about it. Um, so I create these checklist um, points that I think are very important for you to start doing. So first thing on the checklist, research about your ideal client. Create at least three different audiences and play with the different locations, demographics, interests, behaviors for these three different audiences. Okay, so this is the right way you're going to start to understand how the audiences work prior to put money on the paid ad campaign. If I have some questions about um, how to target audience, please let me know. Um, reach out. Okay, I'm here to answer your questions. Okay, the second topic. Pay to promote your best content. What post did best? This is something that you need to track and I'm going to show you in the insights portion um, how to do this, but you need to know what posts are working best. Um, maybe you put a meme and it was working Fine. You had a lot of engagement. You had a lot of likes. So then you want, then you realize that your audiences like this kind of post. So you might want to pay to um, reach more people. Um, pictures and videos. Um, video advertisement. It's uh, right now is like the best content. People engage a lot with videos. Um, if you're going to do like a paid ad campaign, I strongly suggest to be a short video. Um, no, nothing like 20 minute video or 
not even a three minute video. It has to be a fast video, like with three or four pictures and, and kind of really fast with not a whole lot of letters on it, like not a whole lot of um, reading, maybe taglines that are, that are impactful. So um, pictures and videos are usually um, the best content. Um, your descriptions. When you create a, a paid ad, uh, you have to use good headlines. You have to use like an intriguing text and you have to play with the emotions. I don't want to say play, but it's the way we say it. <laughs> so you have to really uh, evoke emotions, uh, benefits. Okay, but those emotionals, those those sorry, those emotions have to bring you to a rational decision. And I'm gonna give you some examples. Okay, don't worry about this. It has to have your company information. A lot of people forget about this. If you create content, please put the company information, uh, a link to your web page. Um, a link to a landing page, uh, anything, but they take these people to your, um, I strongly recommend a website, but I know that a lot of small business owners do not have the budget to create a website. And we're gonna have a class at the end of April, Mike Bindrup is going to provide a class about WordPress. Um, but it is very important to, put the company information, phone number, uh, web page, email, whatever, but don't pay any advertisement without putting the company information, please. And a call to action. A call to action is also very important. If you're gonna sell in a product, what's the call to action? Like, um, and you have like a, like a store on Facebook, like an online store, you create an online store on Facebook, okay, the call to action is going to be the link to that product or service for people to click and buy it, okay? So it's very important to have a call to action. It could be like um, sign up for the newsletter and then catch the email, um, but like I said, it is very important to have provide a call to action. This is an example of um, a, a paid ad, and I wanted to show it to you so you can see the, um, the frame, okay? So this is a, a hot suite um, paid ad campaign. And it says, for example, at the very beginning, a start saving time on social. That could be an emotional, it could be, it's, it's, um, it's talking about a benefit, okay? Saving time. Then it says, manage all your social networks from one simple dashboard. So it make it, that emotion is becoming rational because it says, oh, with one simple dashboard, I'm able to do, a, I'm able to save time. So it's gonna make it from the emotion to become rational, talking about the great futures this um, software has, okay? And then you can see the picture of this person that she's at the computer, but she's smiling, you know, she seems happy, she seems relaxed. So the picture is um, presenting the emotional benefit of it, okay? And then at the bottom, you're able to see this says free 30 day trial. That again, is rational. It says, mm, you know, I have no risk. I can try it for free for 30 days. If, if I don't like it, I can cancel. Then it's going to provide like a social proof. It's gonna say join 10 million plus professional using hot suit. So you are basically saying, I have a proof that what I'm saying is 
true. Okay, so 10 million users. And then you can see that it says hotsui.com, which is the company information. And then it's giving you a sign up, which is the call to action. Okay, so I wanted to show you an example of a paid app. I'm gonna give you another example. This um, general assembly ad. It says, gain one-on-one training for free with your 14-day front row trial. Again, it's going to be rational. It's free, it's 14 days. If I don't like it, I don't need to buy it. So, okay. And then uh, it's going to uh, provide a motion at the bottom, it says, get into a career path that you are passionate about. Okay, so that's emotion. And then again, goes to the rational part of it. And it has um, the link to the, to the company and it has a call to action, sign up. And then we have the other, um, on, the, on the right side, you see the other, um, app with the phone okay they're selling you phone a mini phone whatever and then it's giving you a little bit of pictures of the phone the 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 image the picture is the phone okay it's just very basic and then then we have these um these other other uh, Facebook apps. And what you want to avoid in the case of the credit card is that the, um, the website looks scammy. At farm.mediaplex.com, it doesn't sound like a black card, black bar play card. Okay. So it, it doesn't look like it's something that I would click on. Mm. So we have to be careful with. Um, that our website watch, uh, matches our product. I don't know if that makes sense. So these are a few examples of about how to create a, a good Facebook app, okay? Or an app. Okay, uh, next step is to choose the right campaign. And I think we made a lot of mistakes about this. Um, we tend to abuse of promoting our page. And I see this a lot. People want to get likes and they think that if, if, their, if their fan page has like 1,000 likes or 10,000 likes, it's, um, it, it help, it's gonna help them with, uh, with the reach and, and the potential customers they can get. And it, that's not necessarily true. Um, of course, you have to grow your audience. Of course, you have to have a, a lot of people to like your page. But um, we don't have to focus just only on to promote our page. There are other campaigns that are equally important. In this case, like you might want to create a campaign to convert people. You might want to create a campaign for people who's considering to buy your product and you can maybe get their email so you can target ten, targeting also by email campaigns. And, and maybe you wanted to create a campaign of, of, of awareness, um, but don't only focus on gain likes or promote your page campaigns, okay? So try to also um, create other campaigns. Like for example, you wanted to create a campaign to visit your webpage or you wanted to create a campaign about a certain product that you are very interested in launch. So consider what campaign suits suit the best for you, okay? Okay, so let's, uh, let's create an ad. I am going to show you how to um, create the ad, the, part, the, the design part of it. When you go to create ad, um, you're going to see that automatically the system, the, 
the platform is going to pick your cover photo. Okay. So right there, you wanted to change it. So use the edit um, tool that you have on the picture. And then once you, uh, once you click on edit options, you're going to be able to choose another picture, to choose a video or upload um, a new video or a new picture. And you're able to play a little bit with that picture, okay? So, um, like I said, you have to create, you have to kind of use impactful um, pictures and that go well with your product or service. If you don't have the money or the budget to hire a photographer professional uh, to create a set of stock photos for you, you can always use um, free. Uh, copyright uh, pictures you can get on different uh, websites like Pixabay, um, Unsplash. And even if you have Adobe or Photoshop, um, they have uh, stock photos you can buy for like $1, $2, depending. Um, and you can use those photos. Um, so try to use professional photos. Um, like I said, it's not that hard. If you don't have a photographer, you can use stock photos from Photoshop or Unsplash, Pixabay, and all that kind of different websites. But um, use uh, a good picture, okay? Do not use something that you just did and doesn't have good resolution and colors and all that stuff. So you're able to, um, in, in this portion, you're able to create a description of your app. And I was showing you the emotion and rational thing. You can create it just right there. Um, just create your text, create a good headline, a tagline. Um, even you can promote a tag. Um, let's say that you have a new product and your new product is, I don't know, organic shampoo. You can just create a, a tag with organic shampoo. Okay, I'm just giving you an example. So here is where you are going to design the app, okay? And here is where you're able to pick the audience that you want to. In this case, I'm picking the target audience that I created before. But if you have, if you already create three or five different audiences, then you can pick whatever you want and then test in different audiences. Okay, now checklist to promote your best content. Research different ads about your industry, okay? Don't be afraid to see what others are doing and what's working for them. If it's working for them, it's going to work for you. So um, do your research about your industry. See what others, see what um, the big uh, restaurant chains are creating. Um, if you are into, I don't know, like landscaping business, well, research about other landscaping companies, what they're doing, how they're presenting their ads and try to do it too, okay? So research. The, the second checklist that you have to do is if you are not good into design and your and graphic design, you're not good at it and you're not able to pay to someone to do it for you, you can create a batch, um, batch create your marketing content. This file um, is usually what I do when I kind of don't have a lot of ideas. And then I see something in Instagram that I like and I said, oh, okay, you know, this, this sounds pretty cool. And then you save that app and you kind of like create a file with content. And then when you don't have that many ideas, you can go to this file and see all these examples. And maybe you can come up with a design seeing these different ads. So um, it's a good tool. And I recommend for you to start to creating definitely a batch um, for, for your small business. 
get some photos, you know, sometimes um, you're just uh, going through Google or you're going through your own Facebook profile. You say, you know what, I like this picture. I like this app. Just save it and and watch it later. You know, it's, it's something that it, it can be good for you if you're not really good at design or at graphic design. And another checklist is a start with a one paid ad for $5. Sorry, my mistake is there, over there. Um, so a start with $5 a day, but a start with something. That's your checklist to promote your best content. Uh, our next topic is uh, budget for your small business. The common mistake is not start. A lot of small business owners are scared about to put a credit card in there or to pay any money to um, the platform. They feel like, um, I, I guess, scared, you know, but the common mistake is just not start. So just start with a small budget as $5 per day and then see how that grows and see how that is working for you. You can check the performance. And then if you see that you is working for you, you can start to put more money towards. Uh, how much money is reasonable? If you are a small business owner and you're starting with uh, um, into the, the, the ad campaigns, I would say start small, start really small because I've seen it. Um, I have the, um, I have a small business owner like last year and he was spending too much money in job. He was spending like $300 a week and the return of investment was not there. So he was spending these $300 that he could invest in other things in his uh, small business and and he was putting too much on on paid ads that weren't working so i say start small you can start as five dollars per day and then increase over time when you see results but do not start um too crazy you know um the average that I will recommend if you're a small business and you just, um, you're going to do it by yourself, you're going to use the platform is just um, an average of 150 to 300 per month. And then if you feel and you are checking the performance and you think that you are scaling properly, you might want it to go up to $1,000 if that's reasonable to you. But, um, you are going to set up your budget. You know what your limitations are. So um, I'll say start really small and then go from there. That's my recommendation. And do not be scared of losing money. Um, be scared of losing potential customers. Um, really social media, it is um, the thing right now. We cannot escape from that. Um, and I think that, like I said, if you start small, you're not going to feel it because sometimes you can spend more money to buy something that you don't really need, right? Like maybe you can skip uh, to buy lunch the day and, you know, have a meal from home and save that $10 or those $20 that you're going to spend on an expensive lunch and put it onto your paid out campaigns. Uh, maybe you can skip that coffee that you buy every morning for like five or seven dollars and then you can put it on your paid ad campaign. So uh, do not be scared to lose money and be scared of losing potential customers. Okay. And the, how to set up your, the budget is very easy. When you are in the platform, you're going to ba basically set up your daily budget and you can go as five dollars, ten dollars to 100, 200. So you are the one who is going to set up that. So don't be afraid or put your credit card on it. 
and you are the one who's going to choose how many days you're going to run the campaign. If it's going to be $10 per day, then your budget is going to be $50. Um, so, um, and it's going to tell you when it's going to end. And in this case, because I'm doing it today, it's going to end on April 21st. And um, be careful with this button over here. Uh, it says that it's recommended. Um, basically, if you hit this, is you are, you are saying that you're not giving an end date. So basically it's running, your app is gonna be running as many days as you want until you click to stop. Okay, so um, it, is, it is recommended because it is easier to just run in a constant campaign, but um, I wouldn't suggest to do that if you're just learning to, to use the platform, okay? So just go for the, the basic one, which is an end date. So that way you don't forget, okay? That way you know that your campaign is going to end this day and then you're gonna be able to um, track the results. So I recommend you to start with this one. And then you're gonna put your credit card, don't be afraid. Um, Facebook has a, a very, very good um, safe system for credit cards, credit card information. So um, that's not a problem. You can add the payment method. And I recommend a credit card because, um, you know, with the credit card, you're always able to um, dispute something that you don't see that is clear. Um, and it has more benefits than a debit card. So I recommend a uh, user credit card. And then you're gonna hit the promote now button. And then Facebook is going to review first if your ad um, uh, you know, um, is, is adheres to the policies that Facebook has for advertising. And in about one hour, two hours, then it's, they're gonna send you a message that your campaign was approved or that your campaign was disapproved. If your campaign was disapproved, they will let you know why. And then you can just go ahead and edit whatever you made a mistake on and then run it again. So this is how it works. Uh, this is the checklist to budget for your small business. And basically, in this checklist, you're going to create an ad or choose one post that is performing well. And you're going to start with a $5 budget. And you're going to monitor that performance, OK? Because this is very important, too. And I'm going to show you why insights is so important. Uh, you have to monitor the performance. It's not good just to say, OK, I create a, I create a paid ad. And then I'm going to forget about it. And then I'm going to come back like, one month later to see what happened, okay? So no, if you're going to pay, no matter that you're paying $5, please monitor the performance of that app. So, because if, if someone, if you're paying $5 to engage people and people is really engaging and people is making, making comments and questions and you're not following up, well, it's just, just waste money. And no matter that it's $5, okay? So monitor the performance. And let's go to our last topic. This is insights. Measure the performance of your paid ad campaigns. Why is this important? Because if you keep track of a campaign performance and it's not working for you and you already um, said, let's say this, you set up a budget for $200 for five days and you will notice that at the second day, it's not really working for you and you don't wanna spend those $500. Then you can pause or delete that campaign before it hits that $500, okay? So you're able to rescue your money and if something is not working. So that's why it's insights and, and keep track of a campaign performance is very important to understand, okay? So um, also insights is going to give you the, 
the probability of build your ideal client profile base. Because if you track insights, it's going to tell you who is engaging more. For example, let's say that males are engaging more than females. Let's say that 70% of people who is engaging with your content is a male, is male, they're male. Then you want to target males. You don't want to target females. If they're not really interested in your product, why you want to keep targeting? Or maybe you want to, but you might want to create a paid ad campaign for males, okay? And that's something that you're going to know if you monitor insights, okay? And also it's going to help you to design better campaigns because now you're realizing that a certain age a certain age range is uh, engaging more than other range of age. Like for example, I said that you have more likes from people that is 35 to 45. So you want to focus on that particular age and you're only going to figure it out if you go and see your insights. Where I do find the insights, okay, in your, fa in your fan page on your left, you're going to find your, your, uh, your menu and you're going to see insights just right there between notifications and publishing tools. So you're going to click right there and you're going to be able to see everything, okay? Uh, I'm, I am I'm on the overview side of the menu, but you're able to see followers, ads, likes, reach, page views, actions on the page, your post. In this case, you're able to see uh, some of the posts that we have recent uh, published on our Facebook page. And you're able to see the performance, okay? You know, for example, this free webinar effective Facebook ads was posted yesterday at 9.44 a.m and it reached 394 people organically because we don't do paid ads, paid ads, but organically reached 394 people. So for example, this um, Town Hall Nevada State Contractors Board on April 14, it was posted on April 13, one day before, and it reached 685 people. So this is going to help you to know how your post is performing. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, this video. Uh, this video had a performance of 11, okay? And it has uh, 17 comments and it was shared 28 times, which means that the topic was interesting or something in there that people got engaged with. Um, so it tells you that really receive a lot of uh, attention, okay? And here you're able to see in this, in this part, it says followers provided the most minutes view. Most of, my, most of our followers watch the content. 70% of the people who view this video were our followers. And other people who watched the video was because of recommendation. Maybe one of my followers shared, and then that's why they got to see the video. And other viewers came and shared. Um, right here, it says 13.6% of the viewers were, were um, watched the video because it was shared. So you're able to um, see a lot of details that are going to be helpful for you to create your campaigns, okay? Or not even create the campaigns, but also to create any, any posts. Because you're able to see, okay, videos perform a lot, a lot better than just writing. So I'm going to create more videos because people likes it, okay? So that's why insights analysis is very important. And in your checklist to insight analysis, uh, I'll put keep track of your fan page performance, uh, create a file to organize a bi-weekly performance, 
and you can choose what content works best and create more of that. So this is your checklist for insight. Um, I wanna give you some tips prior to conclude this session. Um, and this is, this is something that I talk maybe too much about it, but I think it's never enough. <laughs> Worry about building your brand of Facebook or of any social media. Why I said this? Because you cannot control social media channels. They don't belong to you. Okay, they can change their policies one day, one day is a design, and then the next day they change completely the design. Maybe you put a lot of effort on your online store on Facebook and suddenly they just decide to not have an online store no more and you're gonna lose them, okay? So, uh, it, of course it is important to be on social media. Of course it is important to engage. Of course it is important to create content for social media, but try that your efforts go towards something else. For example, build a email list that you're able to have with you and use it if you lose your followers, but don't worry because you have an email list and you can create another page and you can invite them again to like your page or to like your new social media channel. Um, worry about creating a website. And I know that for a lot of people to create a, a website is difficult because they tend to be expensive. Um, but think about that your website is your house. That's your space. That's something that belongs to you because you are paying for your domain because you're paying for that space. And it's something that is yours. So that's not going to disappear overnight. So that's something that you can um, put traffic or direct them to there. And you're able to design it the way that you want. Because remember, the social media has its own template. You're not able to do much regarding design. But in your web page, you're able to design as you want. You know, you can create galleries. You can create... Um, uh, you can connect your YouTube channel there. You can create all your social media channel connections from there. So um, take this into consideration. Um, having, building your brand of Facebook is something that at the end is going to help you a lot. Right now. Yes. Just going to add up also, um, we, were, we were having a meeting the other day with the governor's office. They were talking about the 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 grants um how much they so they were distributing the grants and uh, one of the things that they were doing before um allowing a grant uh you know financial assistance is was checking on the websites of the businesses because they wanted to double check if the business was legit was in operations what was going on so that became a part of their checklist in order to say yes or no for 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 money funding. approvals for 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 funding so definitely it's something that um um you know uh validates your business and uh we we had our questions and some comments here um i don't want to interrupt in the middle of the thing so uh you mentioned some research uh what ads what ads works for my industry mm -hmm. how do i find what works for someone in the health and wellness industry for example okay um first you Spy. can go <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> I didn't want to say that word, but we can say page marketing. <laughs> exactly. Page marketing. Um, you can just uh, try to visit as many um, Facebook pages um, from that industry. Just you can just write, search, go to your search um, on on your Facebook profile, and try to find uh, business pages regarding health, and you're gonna find a lot because that's a and then very you create, big industry, yeah. You and then you can your own see, flavor. right? And if you, um, of course, if you are focusing on local, locally, 
then f- try to find pages local, of course, and see what mm-hmm. they're doing. See what, how they are engaging with people. See how many likes they have. You're able to see all that. On, and sometimes the- even in another states that might have the same right. profile of, uh, of clients. So right. um, everybody has different ideas and then you create your own flavor. And uh, then we're getting some comments, uh, very important information to me. I appreciate uh, your, uh, all the information. Thank you, Reina. Uh, definitely, um, I think um, we, we address a very important topic. Uh, let Reina know if you like it or not. So and, uh, we can uh, we right. can pass on that information. To yeah, the, to the... totally. And uh, another thing that I wanted to um, add as a tip is um, organic reach plus paid advertising strategy. Combine these two. Um, I think organic reach is not dead, not yet. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to grow organically. Um, I know it is, um, but um, do not forget your efforts on organic reach because it works. I mean, we as a nonprofit organization, we're not really able to budget um, paid advertising, paid advertisement because we cannot spend that money that is your money into those things. So we try as much as we can to do organic reach and, and we, we have some strategies that have helped us to, to grow our followers and to reach more people. Like we share sometimes in a lot of groups, you know, like a small business groups and things like that. And we discover a lot of people that has um, interest in our classes from that organic reach. So it's not impossible. It is a lot of hard work, of course. Um, but um, I guess it's good to have both. Don't forget about organic reach because you can do a lot with that. But also consider paid advertising because um, the algorithm is, is every time is harder. In this do. case, we, yeah. we rely on you, your, your, our audience, to spread the word. If you like it, share it, let everybody know. Um, right. Over the weekend, you know, you can share with somebody, oh, participate in this fantastic webinar that I learned a lot about, <laughs> Facebook ads. Uh, you should check out these guys. Right. They have uh, pretty good classes. So, word of mouth. Uh, we word count. of mouth. Word of mouth never dies. Okay. So that's yes. a great marketing also, like word of mouth. And the third tip that I want to give you is um, don't boost page or promote posts and maybe someone is gonna say, no, but that's so cool to have that. And I don't have to go through the whole platform because I just can hit the one button and I can just do it from there. I don't recommend it much. And that's because mainly for one reason, okay? When you directly promote post or boost page from your, your, your publication or your post, you are missing the opportunity to create a right campaign for you because that boost page is only to gain likes and you're not able to change that. You're able to change the audience, you're able to change the budget, but you're not able to change the reason of the campaign. And if you promote posts or boost page, you're basically gaining likes. You're just promoting the page. And maybe that's not, the campaign that you want to pay for. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> so that's my advice. I know that some people is going to say that maybe it is not, but um, in my experience, the boost page or promote post fast button doesn't work the way that we want to. I know we're skipping the trouble, or we think that we're skipping the trouble to go through to the to the whole process, but believe me, go through the process is the best. I don't know if Mike wanted to say something about that, <laughs> but that's at least that's my experience. And the fourth and last tip that I want to give you is be consistent. Um, 
in social media for to building your brand, you have to be consistent. It's not like you were going to post today something and then you're going to get lost one month. Okay, so it's not going to work that way. That's not going to make your community grow. It's not going to build trust. It is going to look like you're ghosting your followers. So you have to be consistent. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. Uh, I know that sometimes as small business owners, we have to wear a lot of hats and we have to be marketers. We have to be sales. We have to be financial but um, organize, okay? So follow the checklist that I gave you. Um, you're going to receive these slides. So you're able to go through the slides and kind of, um, you know, see those checklist points that I gave you and go through them and create your action plan. If you organize your time, you, you, you'll do it. it it's, just, it's not about to post like four or five times per day. If you can create just one post that is going to be effective, it's going to be enough. People is going to be engaging and you're going to be able to respond during the day. So you don't have to post like three or four times. Okay. Try to do one, but that is really meaningful for your business and for you. And I don't know if I have more questions, but um, this is it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. The most important thing that I want to say is that you have to apply this, okay? You can go to different webinars and you can learn a whole lot, but if you don't practice, you're going to lose that point. So um, do your homework. <laughs> That's why I'm giving you those checklist things, those, um, you know, like actions to do and, and to start to apply what you're learning. So just learn today and then you have to apply because if you don't do this in a practical way, you're gonna to tend to forget about it. And that's what, we don't want that. And, and we want to provide you something that is actionable for you. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody.